And welcome back to the Dark Souls playthrough. We just killed Sif to get the ring so that we could go into the Abyss to kill the Four Kings, which is one of the final four bosses before we go after uh, Lord Gwyn. You can see right now I'm holding on to the Moonlight Greatsword, which we got when we uh, cut off the tail from Seath, and I'm just going to test that out damage-wise on some of these basic enemies down in the New Londo Ruins to see um, which weapon is going to deal more damage. I'll get this upgraded to plus two, whereas my Enchanted Falcon is plus five. So I just wanted to give it a try. Uh, when we go down into the New Londo Ruins, the enemies down here are actually ghosts. And you can't hurt them unless you have either, I believe it's a divine weapon, or you have to use what's called a transient curse, which you see I've got equipped um, next to my Estus flasks. And those are a consumable item that only lasts for, I don't know, a few minutes. And uh, if you run out of them, then you're you're kind of screwed in the area. Luckily, uh, the ghosts in the area drop them, and there's some that you can pick up as well. So I did, what, 313 damage there with the greatsword, and 321 with the enchanted weapon. So if I were to fully upgrade the Moonlight Greatsword, it will deal more damage than the weapon I've got now, unfortunately. The speed that I can swing the Falcon and the fact that it's just dealing a little bit more damage just makes it a better weapon overall right now. The only benefit of the Moonlight Greatsword is that you can use the R2 attack to shoot kind of a projectile at the uh, at the enemy that deals magic damage based off of your intellect. But when you use that, it, uh, it, it, it wears the weapon down and it dulls its durability so you can only have so many charges before the weapon would break or need to be repaired. So here's the ghosts and they have two different attacks, a short range and a long range. Uh, the long range kind of pulls you in uh, and picks you up and, and deals some damage. They're not a problem by any means though. I, I just use the uh, transient curse which again allows me to attack them. And now we're just going to go through here taking them out and fighting our way to a guy who's going to give us a key that lets us get down into the abyss where we'll find the four kings. Now right around the corner here there's going to be a ghost that's going to uh, attack you. And then this room here is kind of a trap. So what I usually do is I run in and then duck back because all these ghosts pop up. If you were to just go in there and not do that, uh, well, you, there's certainly a chance that these guys would mess you up. There's about four or five of them I'm pretty sure. My girlfriend's in the room behind me watching the Super Bowl, but I don't give a shit about no Super Bowl. I made a bunch of snacks, dips, and I'm grubbing on that all day long, and I don't give a shit about the game. Play some Dark Souls. This is a parrying dagger. This is a good weapon for rogues uh, or, or melee builds that want to focus on parrying because that weapon can, uh, I guess, is really good at, at parrying and makes it a lot easier. It gives you a better window of opportunity to do it. This uh, this ghost here is a is a female. I, I guess maybe a banshee. Uh, when they scream like that, all the ghosts in the area will come after you. And that one's not much that much of, not much of a threat. But there's gonna be one coming up in another room where there's a lot of ghosts around. So you kind of want to clear out all the ghosts before you engage her. Otherwise, you're gonna get butt fucked. Right here is a ladder. If you kick it, it's kind of a shortcut t towards uh, where we came in. So if you die coming up here, it's a lot easier to get back here without going through all the, those ghosts that we went through earlier. There's going to be the one ghost above us here, and then there's two below us up in front of us. If you just run past them, they'll eventually come down. So what I normally do with the ones below is I run past them and then turn around and hightail it back, and then wait for them to come up to uh, a level that I can actually attack them. <laughs> Now a trick that you can use is, in, if, if you're good on health, instead of showing your Estus flasks 
down in the bottom left corner, if you switch it to the transient curse, you can't use the item as long as you have the active effect of a transient curse. And I know that right now the effect is about to wear off, so I'm I, I'm sh displaying the transient curses below because it will light up and glow when it's usable, meaning that um, that's when I can use it again. So that you don't get caught in a situation where you go to try to engage a ghost and have the effect wear off right away. And the room to the left is going to be that Banshee ghost. And then if I, uh, there's a fireplace in that room that will climb up and there's a guy up there who will give us the key. But there's a lot of ghosts in here and if I were to go in and engage that Banshee, they're all going to come out at once. I try that on, uh, I'm currently playing a different character. I'm playing a, a Pyro Rogue build. And I just kind of went in and, and killed that Banshee right away. And there was literally like 10 or 12 ghosts that came out and they just totally kicked my ass. I was getting a little cocky. There you can see the pole attack that they do. And I think that a, if one of them grabs you, I think that the other ghost can attack you at the same time. I'm just getting messed up just by a couple of them there. Oh, it's because my transient curse wore off. I wasn't able to block their attacks anymore. Sometimes uh, the ghost will, will drop a ghost blade, which is a, a neat item that lets you uh, attack them. I don't know if it deals that much damage. But sometimes the, when the ghosts drop their items, you know, they're, they're maybe too high or too low. What the fuck? The banshee just screamed. What? Okay. Well, you, you can't pick up the, uh, the items dropped by them sometimes, which is kind of a bitch because you only have so many transient curses and typically if a ghost is dropping something it's going to be a couple transient curses and if you can't grab them then what the fuck That should be all of them. Now, in this fireplace is a ladder, and if we climb up here, there'll be a guy who sells the... or who, who will give us the key. He also sells a, a miracle, I believe, that can... I don't know if it removes... It might remove curses. I'm not entirely sure. He also sells the items that, that remove it. Or you could kill him. Well, this is a surprise. I get few. You have the Lord Vessel. Very impressive. I know exactly what your intentions are. You seek the four kings whom I guard over. This is the key to the seal. The four kings slumber in the deepest chamber of the ruins. Use this key to break the seal and open the floodgates. Oh, and do not forget, the dark wraiths reside in a dark void called the Abyss. But the abyss is no place for ordinary mortals. Although, long ago, the knight Artorius traversed the abyss. If you can find him and learn from him... Already did. Kicked his ass. Killed his wolf. Took his ring. Hello there. The key to the seal is... Now, there's a covenant called the Dark Wraiths that is, is kind of the PvP, the official PvP um, 
covenant in the game that lets you basically invade other players, but to join them, it's kind of a secret covenant. You have to do things in a special order that I did not do in this game. Instead of giving the... What's that? The, the Lord Vessel to King Speaker Frampt, you have to instead go straight after Sif and come into the New Londo Ruins here and kill the four kings, and then a different serpent will come up. I don't remember what his name is. And, uh... He will actually, you'll give him the Lord Vessel, and then he'll let you join the Dark Wraiths. And if you give him 30 humanity to rank up to rank 2 in the Covenant, you get some awesome armor that like looks like Skeletor, which is pretty badass. Not too great for a mage build. Um, and being that I don't have internet with, with this character, I, I wasn't planning to do PvP anyway, so I didn't have any intention of joining the Dark Wraiths. But maybe on a different character, uh, I will. On my Rogue... My rogue has joined the Dark Wraiths, and he's using the Quelag's Fury Sword plus 5, and he's got the Skeletor armor. He looks pretty awesome. Anyway, I just picked up the Curse Bite Ring back there, which I, I no longer need. But it gives you lots of Curse Resist. It would have been good on Seath. And uh, I'm just going to end up picking up a, a few more items here, and then I'm going to go and use that key to open up a door, which will drain all the water out of the New Londo Ruins so that I can go down below. And there's actually a bunch of Dark Wraiths down there. And those guys, there's a chance that they can drop... Uh, a fist item that when you uh, R2 and use it, it can actually drain humanity from enemies. They also drop a shield. Well, maybe you know what that fist item may maybe you can only get that from joining the Dark Wraith Covenant, which is pretty useful. Uh, I think it's their shield I was thinking of that they drop that just looks really cool, and you'll see them use it. There's also the very large ember, I think it's called, down here that uh, will allow us to upgrade our weapons to plus 15. Uh, I don't need that in this playthrough, but I get it uh, regardless. This, this door is actually an entrance to the Valley of Drakes. So there's several ways that you could come through here, though I don't know why you would want to. To, uh, to, because you'd have to kill the Drakes out there. There is a, a set of armor. I think it's the Priest set. I've never worn it. I think it looks stupid. Okay, so the water's drained and now we can get below. There's two ways to get down, and both of them are via elevators. One of them is here, and then the other one was uh, earlier in the level, where we ran by a ghost that kind of jumped out, and it was the room with the trap of all the ghosts. That would be the quickest one to use if you find that you die. Now down here, there's going to be the Dark Wraith enemies, which can be tough, but uh, as long as you just circle straight behind them, they're, they're not that bi big of a problem. As long as you take on one at a time. There's also some big blob thing that uh, shoots skulls out of it that blow up and it shoots like a goo that makes you slow and it hits really hard. Those don't respawn, but I believe when you kill them they give you 5,000 souls. So here's the Dark Wraith. You just get rocked by backstabs. And that's the armor that you get too uh, when you join the Dark Wraiths and get it up to level 2. You can see his cool shield that he's got glowing out in front. That's a that's a rare drop from them.
can hear the big blob thing. It's to the right. There's going to be a dark wraith that's going to come up, and there's also a dark wraith over to the left that we got to deal with as well before we worry about that blob. They're also a good source of titanite chunks, which is kind of a rare uh, upgrade component, and you use those to ascend weapons to lightning plus 5 or to the plus 10 and maybe even plus 15 weapons. Yeah, it's the plus 15. There's the blob. It's not going to be much of, pro of a problem for the sorcerer, but when I had to go in for, for, for melee attacks, it's a, it's a little bit riskier because it can shoot out a spear that just does a lot of damage. You'll run into those skulls a, f a few more times. We're going to see them in the catacombs also, and all you've got to do is, is run up to them till they start to uh, explode and then back off, and then uh, you'll be fine. When they explode, they can actually hurt other enemies in the area too, which is useful when you're fighting skeletons in the catacombs, and you know that. Now, we're going up some stairs. Uh, earlier to the left is, is where we would have entered had we come down the first elevator. Um, but what we're doing up here is we're going up to the very large ember. So this is just a one-time uh, thing that we're going to have to do. I don't even know who's playing in the Super Bowl. Giants? Is that one of them? I don't know. I don't even watch football. Don't give a shit about it. I like beer, chicken wings, pizza, bean dip, sausages, snassages. But I got pretty shit bomb drunk on Friday night, and uh, I'm not really feeling a beer right now, so I'm not gonna. On a brighter note, for those of you who follow this channel for the League of Legends videos, rumor has it that I'll have an internet connection to my home on Tuesday. We'll fucking see. But if I do, it's the return of Dan to League of Legends. We'll see. I think that shield is totally awesome. I've never gotten it on any character, though. Right here is a secret door that I found uh, on a video on YouTube one day, just randomly looking around, or maybe it was on Reddit. And uh, yeah, there's there's gonna be one dark wraith here with a uh, with a treasure box. I think it's got a, a a titanite chunk in it. Either that or a green titanite. Either way, it's it's worth uh, going after. Those cracked red eye orbs are dark wraith items, and they're actually uh, a consumable item that lets you invade another player's world for PvP. 
when you join the Dark Rates, you actually get an item that lets you do it without having to uh, reuse those, or without having to expand resources to buy those red eye orbs. That's going to be the final um, blob thing. You can see he just shot his slime at me. He missed, but when it hits you, it uh, it puts puts a big, thick-looking, gooey armor on you, and you move really slow. There's also a couple ghosts that can fly down here. Uh, if this is not your first time running through, being that I've killed all the ghosts in the level, they're not here. But had I uh, died and, and came back, there would be some ghosts that would be kind of in this area right now flying down at me. So it's always good to have a couple transient curses on you if you wipe on the four kings. The four kings can be a pretty tricky boss because it's basically a DPS race. You have to just burn them down as quick as you can. And obviously that's not going to be a problem for the sorcerer because as we've seen he just does ridiculous fucking damage. But uh, the, t the main tactic is to run at the boss and just beat on them with, with a two-hander. You don't even use your shield and roll to the left to avoid his attacks. Uh, if you keep rolling around behind him, he's not going to be able to hit you. There's only one or two moves that are... Uh, there's only one move that's not dodgeable. It's a magic attack. Uh, but I don't believe that he does that once you're close enough to him. And the reason it's a, a DPS race is because you have to... Uh, you, you start by fighting just one of them, and over time, the next one spawns, and the next one, and then the fourth one. And uh, if you don't kill them quick enough, you'll easily become... You can easily become overwhelmed by having multiple bosses on the screen. Now I just recall to the bonfire because now that I've kind of cleared the area I uh, I want to save my spells so we're gonna go back through it and and fight those Dark Wraiths melee so that I have all my spells to take out the boss. And I'll use a little editing here to, to kick forward a bit. Alright. I just uh, skipped a bunch of footage there. Fast forwarded through me fighting those Dark Wraiths and a couple ghosts. Now, when you're in human form, you can actually summon that Witch Beatrice. She's just around the corner behind me. But every time that you summon a helper, it increases the hit points of the boss. So it's almost worth it to not have any helpers because, well, for one, Witch Beatrice hardly does any damage. And if you're going to summon helpers to help you like human players, you better hope that they're really good and have a really good weapon or, or spells because... If they're not going to burn down through that extra hit points quick enough, uh, obviously it wasn't worth it to bring them on, and it's just going to make the boss fight harder. So anyway, you have to equip the uh, the Artorus ring that we got from killing Sif right now so that we can walk on the abyss because basically we're going to fall off a cliff here into, into nothing, and that's where the bosses are going to instantly spawn. And then it's just a trivial battle from there. Again, just run straight at them and dodge to the left when they swing at you, no problem. So that purple attack is not dodgeable, but you can uh, you can mitigate the damage by using the the crest shield, which blocks magic. Now getting into the boss can be kind of tricky, but once you get up in there, no problem. I'm not really doing a very good job of dodging to the left like I said I should. These crystal soul spears and soul spears just fuck them up. fucking own bad play with my boss play with my boss
so this is the second of the four major boss battles uh, before the final boss. And once we take this guy down, we're going to head down into the demon ruins for the Ceaseless Discharge, the Fire Sage Demon, the Centipede Demon, and then the mo the cheapest fucking stupid boss in the game, the Bed of Chaos. You know, I would like to honestly see somebody one-shot that thing because it's just so fucking stupid. You'll see when I get there, but... Oh shit, I'm getting kind of sloppy here. Alright, get him. Kill him, take my souls, and that's about that. Now a bonfire appears over there, and normally that's where the other serpent would appear also if um, if you did those events in the right order by giving him the Lord Vessel before talking to, to Frampt. For 60,000 souls, I'm going to be able to level up a little bit, get out of here, and I'm going to teleport straight down to the Daughter of Chaos so that I can go into the Demon Ruins and go after the next four bosses. So that's going to end this video. We'll see you next time.